Good morning, I'm Harley Schlanger with the LaRouche Organization with your daily update for February 4th, 2021. With the trial coming up of Donald Trump next week in the U.S. Senate to attempt to convict him on one charge of impeachment, which was passed by the House of Representatives, the question comes up, why is this going on? There is a legitimate question as to whether it's even constitutional to convict someone who's been impeached after they've left office. There's also a lot of questions, legitimate questions, about the charge itself, the fact that he was engaged in incitement to insurrection. But in investigating this whole question, I want you to listen to the vitriol spewed by one of the opponents of President Trump in the lead up to the uh, uh, Senate trial next week. Uh, this person wrote, quote, the Republican Party has been hijacked by fascist elements. It is now a far-right organization in league with neo-Nazis who want to overthrow democracy and seize power using violence if necessary. I'm continuing to quote from this op-ed. It goes on to say, the choice is between the U.S. as we know it or the white supremacist mob. Continuing the quote, Republicans have one more chance to turn their backs on fascism, unquote. In other words, by voting to convict President Trump. Now, who is it who made this statement? You might suspect it was the lunatic Adam Schiff or the even more crazy Nancy Pelosi. In Pelosi's terms, all leads, roads to Trump lead to Vladimir Putin. Uh, the two were the drivers of the first impeachment, and they've continued to insist that the Republican Party has become a fascist party, and unless it rejects Trump, it will uh, identify itself as being outside of the mainstream of U.S. politics. Well, in fact, the author is Richard Wolff, a polemicist for The Guardian, a leading British newspaper in uh, leading in the sense that it was at the forefront of the attacks on President Trump. Uh, one of its authors, Luke Harding, wrote the book that you see behind me, Collusion, in which Harding insisted that the Christopher Steele dossier against President Trump was legitimate. He still insists that, as do many of the people in the opponents to Trump, including some Republicans and Democrats, who refuse to accept the fact that the Mueller report, in spite of insisting that there was Russian evidence, or evidence of Russian hacking, they never produced any. And the people who supposedly did the investigation said they never found any. And those more honest elements, like Bill Binney and his veteran intelligence professionals for sanity, did a study which showed there could not have been hacking of the DNC and Hillary Clinton computers. So here you have, from a British source, the argument that is driving many of the Democrats that they're trying to save the country from a fascist takeover. Now, what's the basis of the charge? Well, they're interpreting, trying to interpret what President Trump said at a rally on January 6th, which they claim was the incitement. Yet there's vast amounts of evidence that show that the riot was pre-planned, that the 800 or so people, led by mainly 50 to 100 people, to storm the Capitol, came to Washington intending to do it. Evidence that exists in the FBI files, New York Police Department files, even the Capitol Police Department files. So how were they incited by the president's speech on January 6th? which was still going on when the charge up the Capitol steps started. Well, it's obviously a fraud, along with the whole question of whether or not a former president can be uh, convicted of impeachment. Now, we also know the first impeachment trial against Donald Trump was a fraud. The charge that he blackmailed the Ukrainian president to get dirt on Joe Biden in return for uh, money that was given by the United States to Ukraine. There's no evidence that that was actually what happened in the discussion. And who, was, who were the people who presented the evidence against him? Well, I insist that you look at this 
and recognize the same people who brought the original Russiagate, brought the Ukraine impeachment case. And these included top-level operatives buried inside the Defense Department, the State Department, the Diplomatic Corps. And one example of this is Fiona Hill, who was a member of the National Security Council and who testified against Trump on Ukraine. It turns out Fiona Hill provided the so-called leading witness for the Christopher Steele dossier. And we know that even the FBI knew the Steele dossier was fraudulent. It was a paid-for hit job, paid for by the Democratic Party, making up a story to damage President Trump during the presidential campaign, and then it was used to try and remove him from office. And after two and a half years of investigation, it turned up empty. No story of Russian hacking or Trump collusion. So what about the role of Christopher Steele? Well, do you know Steele was also involved in the Ukraine coup in February 2014. Who was the U.S. point man in the Ukraine coup? Joe Biden. Who was the actual person who threatened to withhold money unless the Ukrainian government did what he demanded, which was to shut down the investigation of Burisma? Joe Biden. He bragged about having the prosecutor Shokin fired. Who was the one working with the Soros networks, with neo-Nazis, and with Christopher Steele in organizing and continuing the coup of February 2014? It was Joe Biden. Now, do you think the Democrats don't know this? Do you think leading people in, involved in intelligence don't know this? So this whole fraud continues now with the second impeachment and the upcoming trial. And we've never really had a full investigation of Russiagate, which would identify that it was British intelligence operating on behalf of the British monarchy and the city of London that targeted Donald Trump, as admitted by the House of Lords in a December 2018 document, which said that it's in the interests of Britain that Trump not be reelected for the sake of the so-called special relationship in which the United States is used as the military arm to enforce City of London global economic policy. So why is this second impeachment trial going ahead? Well, the real desperation is not the fear of white supremacy or, or Nazi takeover of the United States. In fact, if you want to know what's behind that, the so-called right-wing terror group, investigate the FBI. This is their forte. They've been engaged in provocations many times in the past against the uh, civil rights movement, against, uh, uh, well, as uh, provoking Islamic terrorists. The FBI has a, his, a historic record of being a provocateur for these kinds of things. And we now find that one of the leaders of the Proud Boys was essentially working on the payroll of the FBI. So if you take a look at this, you know that we're not dealing with a fascist threat, or actually we are. And what is the fascist threat? The Great Reset. Fascism is not inherently right-wing. Fascism, as the term was used originally, was when corporations control governments, when private corporations manipulate and control the institutions of government for the benefit of private interests as opposed to the, for the public good. In this sense, what we're seeing from Davos and the Great Reset is an effort to destroy the institutions of sovereign governments because part of the Great Reset is to give to the central banks, which are agencies of the private banks, the biggest banks in the world, the biggest swindlers in the world, control the central banks. And the Great Reset incorporates in, within it the idea that those central banks will take over spending policy of government from the elected representatives of the people in Congress or in parliaments. That's fascism. And why would they do that? To protect and continue the Ponzi schemes that loot the American people. And we've just seen evidence of the Ponzi scheme in the stock market with the so-called GameStop story. 
where, you know, forget cheering for the so-called little guys against the hedge funds. The hedge funds were on both sides, of course. That's what hedge funds do. They hedge. They try to make profits on whether stocks go up or down and by bringing in little guys into the market to fleece them. That's what the GameStop operation is about. BlackRock was one of the companies that was involved in the Reddit site in, in backing up the assault on the, the so-called big hedge funds. So what we're seeing with this second impeachment trial is a classic example of diverting attention away from the real issue, which is that the fascist policy is coming from the promoters of the financial oligarchy of the Great Reset and the Green New Deal. It's to divert attention from that while vilifying the opponents, the potential opponents of that policy. That's all it is. And the fact that it's so clear, so clearly stated in The Guardian, which was one of the leading mouthpieces for the strategy used against Trump in both Russiagate and Ukrainegate, should make clear that we're still under assault by a foreign power. But that's Great Britain and its intelligence agencies, the monarchy and the city of London. And until we get that straight, the United States is not going to be able to defend itself effectively. And so that's why we have to keep telling the real story. Now, tomorrow's Friday. I'll take your questions. Any questions you have on what's going on politically, strategically, economically, send them to me at my personal email, harleysch at gmail.com, and I'll take them up tomorrow. In the meantime, Keep looking on our, the LaRouche Organization website for updates on these and other stories. Thanks, and I'll see you tomorrow.